Ted Lasso Welcome Wagon has arrived. From Airbnbs and head bumps to CGI characters and possible spin-offs, let's uncover the most exciting facts about the all-beloved Ted Lasso. It is an injection of goodness. To the joy of Ted Lasso fans, Airbnb now provides an opportunity to spend a night at the coach's favorite pub. That's it. That's the one. Yeah, boy, I'd love to. May herself posted the listing. <laughs> My pleasure. The offer includes spending time at the pub, discussing the series, playing a round of darts, singing karaoke, and more. Drinks are on me! <laughs> but it's not open to everyone. This exclusive opportunity will be given to the first three lucky individuals who reserve it for a few dates available in October. So if you want to try, keep in mind that the bookings open on the 21st of March. Which I would have answered, yes sir. You certainly remember this scene. <laughs> But you probably don't know that this part wasn't scripted. Jason Sudeikis actually bumped his head and just got on with it. And it didn't end that well. I go off stage, I reach up, and there's a little bit of blood on my finger, and I look down, and then pool <laughs> blood. It starts dripping down, pooling in my hand. The injury was so bad that the doctors had to glue Jason's head shut. Thank God it all ended up fine. Ted's delicious biscuits were part of the reason why he managed to steal Rebecca's heart so quickly. Where did you get these? But the truth is, they were not that delicious in real life. Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca, repeatedly shared that they were horrible. I mean, literally like sticking a piece of sponge in your face. In fact, they were so nasty that Hannah had to apply all her skills in the scenes where she ate them. It's the greatest acting job of my life that anyone thought they tasted nice. What can we say? Kudos to Hannah as she did a great job devouring them. But the story didn't end there. To Hannah's joy, the biscuits got much tastier in season two. I think because I have complained about them so globally, they've added a lot of butter and a lot of sugar, and that's always going to make things better. <laughs> so she didn't have to pretend to like them anymore. Hell yes! And in fact, the fame of the biscuits went beyond the show. Earlier this year, ice cream company Jenny's presented a new flavor called Biscuits with the Boss. It's a limited edition, and it features crumbled shortbread cookies and salted butter. Sounds yummy. Shit, that felt good! Share in the comments below if you've already tried the ice cream. Who doesn't love the chemistry between these two gorgeous women? Where did you get those? My mum. Their friendship means so much to the show that it's hard to imagine that they were supposed to be rivals. That's right, that was the initial plan. But Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple hit it off so quickly behind the scenes that it was impossible to do it. Both actresses were relieved that their characters weren't pitted against each other. There's no Rebecca without Keely, and if you ever leave my life, I'm going to stalk you. <laughs> Keely is one of the wittiest characters in Ted Lasso. I never know how to react when a grown man beatboxes in front of me. But initially, she wasn't supposed to be that funny. Juno Temple, who plays her, inspired the writers to give her character more jokes. All because the actress turned out to bring much more fun than what they had written for Keely. I'm a tiny cucumber with anxiety. You could do that. <laughs> I will just... She's a lovely inspiration, isn't she? But I'm mad all the time. <sighs> Roy Kent could have been very different. The actor behind him was initially hired as a writer for the show. But soon enough, Brett Goldstein realized that he'd play the footballer perfectly well. Although, there was a problem. But I also <laughs> thought no one around this table writing thinks I'm Roy. <laughs> because I'm soft-spoken and I love the Muppets, so it's like... So he decided to film a few scenes of himself playing Roy and sent them to the crew. If this is awkward, or this is <laughs> pretend you never got this email. <laughs> but if you like it, I think Roy Kent is in me, growling. Who's it? And they immediately loved it. But some fans have weird thoughts about Roy. Ever since the first season came out, some fans have speculated that Roy is a CGI character. The Roy Kent character looks and acts like he was dropped from Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Apparently, it's because his face is very matte and extremely chiseled. Other fans also notice that he makes some weird body movements and has a certain glow around him, like a video game character. This is why it's hard to love you. This weird rumor even made the actor wonder if he's CGI or not. And I started to be like, I mean, maybe I am. Like <laughs> but Jimmy Kimmel found a way to prove that Brett is real by making him drink chocolate milk. He's real. He exists. I'm a real boy. <laughs> who doesn't like this guy who reminds everyone of a happy golden retriever? Danny Rojas, Rojas, 
Daddy Rojas. We just love his constant positive attitude and unending energy. But few fans know that the actor who plays Danny Rojas used to be a professional footballer. Cristo Fernandez played with Tecos of Liga MX. FYI, it's the top professional football division in the Mexican League. His sports career ended after he suffered a bad knee injury. That's when Cristo decided to become an actor, and succeeded. I can't really tell, but it seems like he's very good. And he's not the only one who can actually play. While auditioning to play the footballers, the actors were asked not only about their performance skills, they also had to play the game. Is in. He For the show's crew, it was vital that everyone could actually throw the ball decently. They definitely made the right choice for all the team members. In fact, the guys were so good that they even managed to trick a reporter into thinking they were real players. Finish. Brilliant oh, game, brilliant. Casper really Shemichael, I mean, Casper uh, Shemichael was absolutely brilliant. That save, unbelievable. And they actually made him believe that Danny Rojas was an up-and-coming player. Hey, he has a song. Na 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 na. Danny Rojas, Rojas, Danny Rojas. Na 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 na. Brilliant. He's such a beloved character that it's hard to imagine someone else playing him. Caesar, you later. But it nearly happened. Nick Mohammed, who now portrays Nate, was the first to audition for the role of Higgins. And even more shockingly, Phil Dunster also tried out for the part. Yes, the guy who plays the show's star player and narcissist Jamie Tart. Jamie Tart, do, 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 Jamie Tart, do, 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 do. Can you imagine him as Higgins? What can we say? We should all be thankful to the casting crew. Because they knew exactly which actor was perfect for each role and made the show so great. During its run, the series got an unbelievable amount of nominations. It even broke a record at the Emmys. At the 73rd ceremony, Ted Lasso gathered as many as 20 nominations for its first season. It won quite a few of them, too. This is the fucking icing on the cake. I'm so sorry. And the year after as well. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, here we go. So now we're expecting Ted Lasso to show us the same caliber again with the third season. The idea of Ted Lasso started as an NBC Sports commercial break back in 2012. And uh, I'd like to talk to the Queen, please. It followed the same premise and became a huge hit. My job just got a lot easier. Ties and no playoffs. So with the help of his then fiance Olivia Wilde, Jason began creating the series. Just a few years later, it came to our screens. And the show became so beloved that it's hard to believe that it's possibly coming to an end. It was real fun watching you out there today. From the very beginning, Ted Lasso was supposed to be a three-season arc, and Jason recently commented that it's the end of the story they wanted to tell. At the same time, he hasn't officially confirmed that it's the final season. In fact, he refuses to talk about a season four until the third one releases its finale. It's like you know being on a date with someone you really, really like, but really looking forward to that date with that next person. That's mean. And even if it is the end, it doesn't mean that it's a full stop and we'll never see anyone from the Ted Lasso world again. Is there more? I, I mean, absolutely. Sudeikis revealed that they've set the table for a few possible plot lines. And when asked if Ted himself will appear in those new stories, Jason replied that there's always an option of a cameo. You're a godsend, Ted Lasso. Hannah Waddington, in her turn, said that it probably won't be a story of Rebecca's life. But everything's so up in the air these days that no one, including Jason, can say anything for sure. No, no, no one knows that. Share in the comments below whose story you'd like to see in a Ted Lasso spinoff. If you want to learn more about your favorite TV shows, check out our other videos.